Greetings from Buffalo Memorial Baptist Church. I am Pastor Brent, and we had another prayer meeting tonight where we took the time to pray for the shooting that occurred in Georgia today. Don't know all the details. We prayed about what we knew, and we know that God knows the rest, and we just gave that to him. You know, as the world is falling apart around us in so many different ways, it's it's hard sometimes to remember that God's still at work. Um, and I want to share some verses tonight that talk about his promised work in us. And I pray that it's an encouraging to each one of us. We might not be able to change the world around us, but we can give ourselves to the Lord and see what he's doing in us. So let me open in a word of prayer and we'll look at those verses. I thank you, Father, for your great love and care that's seen in Jesus Christ as he came to this earth to die on a cross for us. I pray that you would uh, just bless us to know that you're still at work and that we could trust you to complete your work. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've entitled this God's work in our prayer. The first verse that I want to share is Philippians 1, 6, a favorite verse of mine from Philippians. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ of Jesus Christ. I love that. It begins, I am sure of this. Others translate, be confident of this. And that he, God, who began a good work in me, it was his cho choice. It was his work. I didn't work myself to salvation. He called me and I responded. He began a good work, and he promises now that he started that work, he will bring it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ, at the day of Jesus Christ. That's encouraging. There are times when I don't feel like I'm making any progress at all, but I go back to this verse. God has promised he's making progress. But it's hard sometimes to think, well, what should that work look like? Maybe I'd be more encouraged if I knew a little bit about what he was hoping to do in me. A previous pastor of our church just said, he wants you to look like Jesus. So he starts chipping away everything that doesn't look like Jesus. That's one way of looking at it. But that's that's kind of a, a broad thought. A couple of verses later in Philippians 1, uh, Paul wrote this. It is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. I want you to think about what that verse is saying. And I ask this question. Is love really the answer as we wait for Christ? Both of these verses talk about the day of Jesus Christ, the day of Christ. So as we look forward to the day that Jesus returns, is love really the big part of our focus? Is God's work in us to, to grow our love? I think so. But let's look and see how that comes about. First, it talks about an abounding love. I prayed for a recently married couple that they would not love each other out of duty, but they would be so overflowing with God's love that the love that he gives them would just overflow to one another, an abounding love. There are times when I love out of duty. I'm supposed to do the right thing. No, it's so much better when God overwhelms me with his love and I can't help but share it with other people. And then it says knowledge, with knowledge. Uh, the word knowledge in, in the Greek means an experiential knowledge, not just to add knowledge, but a knowledge that is part of our life. People go to school. School's just started. We prayed for the school shooting in Georgia. School's just started. People can learn things at school, but when they get out and live life, they start to experience what they've le learned, and they put it into practice, and, it's, and it becomes an even deeper knowledge. So I can know that I'm supposed to love people, but when I start loving people, it goes even deeper. So an abounding love and experiential knowledge and a discerning love with knowledge and all discernment. You know, there's some hard relationships out there. I did when I do what little counseling I do. Uh, there are some people that come to me and they've been so hurt by someone in their lives. And they said, you have to be discerning. You still are called to love them, but you don't have to love them in a way where you keep opening yourself up to the kind of hurts that they bring into your life. And I mentioned tonight, when we pray for our children, that they would find a, a life partner, a, a, a husband or a wife, and we pray that they would be discerning in their love that they wouldn't just give their love to anyone, but they would know who the right person. They'd be discerning. 
not just in how to love, but also how to be loved. And uh, that just that just encouraged me when I think about. It. So an abounding love and experiential experiential knowledge and a discerning love, and then sincere and blameless. This is very interesting to me. Um, that that. This idea we may approve what is excellent and be pu pure and blameless. The word pure is translated sincere and other. And I, I remember the my Bible prof that taught me what the word sincere means in the Greek. It means without wax. In the uh, Bible times, if they had a clay pot and it cracked, they would melt some wax and fill in the crack and then paint over it and try to pass it off as sincere without wax. But if you hold it up to the sun, if they hold it up to the light, you could see, ah, uh, no, there's some light shining through there. Wax is not the same consistency. And and so just to think about my sincerity, this kind of goes back to if it, it's an abounding love, it's not going to be a forced love. It's going to be a sincere love. And then the idea of being blameless, that no one can take offense. I may say I'm loving somebody, but I can offend them when I'm, quote, loving them. No, we want to love in a way that, that they don't blame us. They don't take offense at us. And remember, all this is for while we're waiting for the Lord to return. I just think as God promises to do a work in me, the best way for me to cooperate with him is to pray. And this is a good thing to pray for. An abounding love, an experiential knowledge, a discerning love with all sincerity and blamelessness. I think that's just a beautiful path. So in answer to the question, is love really the answer as we wait for Christ? Remember the great greatest commandments, to love God, to love others. All other things in the law and the prophets fall into place under those two commandments. I pray that you can be loved by God, that you can love others and grow in the love that, in receiving the love that they have for you. Father, I thank you. The, the way we receive love from you starts in Jesus Christ, that we admit we're sinners and that you sent your son to die for our sin. And he rose again so we could call upon him as Savior. I pray for everyone that hears this, that they know that that's true in their life. And that as that is true in their life, help them to see the growth that you want to bring to their lives that you're going to continue a work until the day of Christ. You're going to make us more and more like your son. You're going to complete your work. And part of that work is, the biggest part of that work is learning to love. And I pray that you'll help us to do that. Help us, Lord. Help us no matter what's going on in the world around us. Help us to trust that you have a loving plan for us. And that loving plan in, involves loving you and loving others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.